and, uh, and our esteemed faculty, Dr. Nalini Kumarji. So thanks for uh, joining us for this uh, very important lecture on farm mechanization impact and determinants. Basically, um, this training, it has um, 179 uh, basically selected participants, but uh, some of them have not joined or may be joining later on. Uh, so that uh, we are not sure how many will join, but yesterday 120, eight participants were there, but slowly it seems they are finding it hectic or what, uh, they are going out also. So um, for the benefit of participants, Dr. Nalini Ranjan Kumar is principal scientist at this institute, ICR National Institute of Agriculture, Economics and Policy Research. Uh, earlier, he was work, uh, working at uh, principal scientist in uh, uh, Mumbai Sife, and now uh, after joining here, he has been working on this farm mechanization and he's an expert on the issues related to farm mechanization. So now in this budget also government uh, has uh, given sufficient emphasis on farm mechanization. So this lecture is very important to understand the issues related to that. Now I would just like to invite uh, my colleague Dr. Nalini Ranjanji for uh, talk with the participants. Dr. Nalini Ranjan. Thank you, Madam, for <coughs> kind yeah. introduction. Yeah, your screen is uh, shared and you can just oh. in full uh, slideshow. This lecture is uh, made available on YouTube also. So, <coughs> Yes, it is visible. Perfect. Ah, dear friends, so today we'll discuss about this farm mechanization, its impact and determinants. Uh, how farm mechanization has changed Indian agriculture or on what counts it affects. So <clears throat> uh, we'll discuss all those things. So, So my presentation will be in following subtopic that is what is farm mechanization, why farm mechanization, trends and pattern of farm mechanization in India, impacts of farm mechanization, and drivers of farm mechanization, and second, uh, second last will see, see a solution to improve mechanization, and finally conclusion. So we'll, I will discuss these topics in my presentation today. So we all know that what is farm mechanization? Farm mechanization is nothing but <clears throat> using mechanical labor in place of traditional human and uh, this, uh, block labor or animal labor. So here in mechanization farm, plowing, like plowing operation is done by tractor, showing applying fertilizer and by drill, by ripping and threshing by combined harvester, etc. Whereas in traditional agriculture, we used to use this bullock or this animal sources of dot power to do all these operations. <clears throat> so mechanization is nothing but a process of replacing biological sources of energy with mechanized sources of energy. So mechanization will be either complete or partial. In complete mechanization, we remove this Animal sources, animal means mainly uh, bullock and uh, this, uh, whatever this uh, other camel and buffalo sources are there, so we remove those. But human labor remain in the process, so that is known as complete mechanization. But all the operations in agriculture is performed by machine only. That is complete mechanization, and it is generally. Uh, practicing developed countries where labor is scarce. But in countries like India and other developing countries, partial mechanization is beneficial where a optimum combination of uh, all the three is required. So why farm mechanism? Why, why we decided to go 
mechanizing all parts. Because use of labor in agriculture is not uniform throughout the year. So sometimes we require more labor, sometimes we require less labor. So we cannot give work to labor throughout the year. And in case when peak period is there, we cannot manage with the existing human labor. So therefore, machine labor is needed to smoothen the operation, farm operation. Shortage of labor during peak periods. So that justify shortage also. Unreliability of available labor. Unreliability means the quality of work done by human labor or good of labor is not reliable because every individual differs in its quality of work and efficiency. So they are totally unreliable. Suppose a work has to be done by five people. To hire five people, they will not be able to do if someone is not as efficient as others. So they are unreliable. But machine is totally reliable. If this much work is done by a machine in hour, that will be done. And quality of this work will be also fine. So that is reliable. Quality as well as quantity of work is reliable through machine, whereas through individual, the human being or <coughs> animal labor is not possible. Therefore, to improve the quality of work, improve the efficiency of input use, reliable power machine is required. Inability of animate power of sources, that is human and draft animals, to complete operation within optimum period, resulting in losses in yield of produce. Just like in case of wheat, we very well know that after a certain period, delay in sowing cause yield loss. So with limited animal and dot power, we are not able to complete those operations within that period, resulting into huge loss of yield. But with our machineries, we can expedite the work in a very short span of time, and we can save the deterioration in quality of crop and yield loss. So these are the regions. Fifth one is most alarming region that unwillingness to work in agriculture. In spite of giving bread and butter to most of the people in this country, this agriculture, nobody wants to work in agriculture. Most of the people wants to shift from agriculture. It is mainly due to drudgery involved in agricultural operation. So without our machinery, when we are working, a lot of drudgery is involved. So people do not like such kind of thing, and therefore they don't want to work. Harsh climate and environment. They have to work in sub-zero degree temperature as well as 50, 50, 52 degree temperature also. So that, that in that climate, we, we, we do not want to venture out from our rooms and they have to, farmers have to work in that climatic condition. So therefore, nobody wants to be in that harsh climatic condition. Long working hours. Again, agriculture is not five or six hour work every day. You have to go to field in the night also and you have to start day in, uh, very early. So there is no time period when work required, you have to work for 10, 12 hours continuously. So long working hours in comparison to industrial urban white color gels. So everybody is attracted towards this white color gels. Nobody wants to work in agriculture. Traditional agriculture, farmer working relationship, generally laborers and farmer. Relations are not good because agriculture is not so profitable venture as industry and job disparity, uh, wage disparity between agriculture and non agriculture sector is very huge. And also long working hour 
So generally, workers demand more wages, and farmers are not in a position to pay more wages. So therefore, there will a struggle farmers between farmers and labor. That was also one of the reason people wanted to leave the agriculture. Limited day of work in a year for a labor work period. Work uh, work days are very limited. So getting 200 mind days of work is also very tough. So they used to get 100 and 150 day of work and they have to be, uh, live with that army throughout the year. So that is very meager. Um, so that, that also discourages them to work in agriculture. And low annual income. Even farmers, you very well know what is contribution of agriculture in our GDP, about 15%. And about 60% of population depends on agriculture. So 15% income is for 60% people. So we can say how low income is there in comparison to non-agriculture sector. So this also distracts people. So all these problems can be reduced with use of car machinery. Therefore, mechanization is must in Indian agriculture to improve the environment. Also, mechanization is a key driver of productivity. So, mechanization increases productivity as well as it enhances cropping intensity. We can crop more, more crop in a year on the same land in comparison to traditional agriculture. So we can take two, three crops. So therefore, it enhances cropping intensity as well as productivity due to better, like better placement of inputs and early perform, uh, performance of operation and better performance of operation increases the productivity and that increases the production. So mechanization helps in improving the production. That is the objective of our agriculture. So, agriculture productivity has a positive correlation with level of mechanization. Here, <coughs> red line indicates the food grain yielding ton per hectare and this blue line indicates the hard power availability in terms of kilowatt per hectare. So this clearly indicates that with increasing hard power availability, food grain yield has also increased. So there is a correlation and this may be So, what is the status of car mechanization in our country? How it has been mechanized? So, if we see region wise use of car machinery in India, this data is a little old. But we see agricultural tractor is highest in north. This much farmers are using 60, 60, 67%, 66 67% farmers are using this agricultural tractors. In north, whereas in south, it is only about 32 percent, and lowest is in northeast, northeast of the districts, in northeast of NH region. Similarly, the power tiller use of power tiller is highest in NH. This is mainly due to unfavorable terrain, terrain in this uh, northeast, which require this. Low weight tractor that is power tiller to perform. Also in eastern region also where our size is very small, this power tiller circuit. Diesel engine is more in use in eastern India. It is mainly due to fragmented land holding as well as unavailability of power. 
to the into the into diesel pump set to irrigate the crops. Similarly, thresher's thresher's are more in use in Eastern India, whereas this uh, combined are more in use in this. So this indicates that there is a diversity, there is a, a lot of similarity in use. Somewhere it is very high and somewhere it is very low. So, we, so there is a no uniformity throughout the region. Okay. In the, uh, in, uh, with respect to all the farmers. Similarly, similar is the condition on mechanization across farm size categories. So in all the <coughs> farm machines, adoption of farm machines are high on large farms and low on marginal farms. But in case of digital engine pump set, it is high on marginal farm, mainly due to a small size of land holding where they cannot install this you know, power power operated uh, uh, irrigation pump set. Okay, so it is very clear that farm mechanization is not in form across farm size category as well as across region of the country, which require attention of policy makers to improve the farm mechanization on a small and marginal farms as well as lagger regions where mechanization is rich. Now, <coughs> mechanization index was estimated to understand how the crop wise mechanization, crop wise in the state status of mechanization. For, the same, for that, the mechanization index was estimated. Mechanization index is nothing but it is ratio of cost of machine charges divided by cost of machine, animal labor, and human labor. So this is mechanization index was calculated for each crop and each state and combined at the national level or state level with this formula. For the purpose of <coughs> this, uh, this formula requires cost of cost of cultivation of all the crops throughout the state and country. So, cost of cultivation of principal crops in India was used for the purpose, and mechanization was estimated for all the crops for the country. Then it was found that wheat is the most mechanized crop, followed by lentils, soya bean, gram. Barley, whereas jute is the least mechanized crop. When we look towards the states, the state of Punjab is the most mechanized state, followed by MP, Haryana, Chhattisgarh, UP, Kerala, Bihar, and West Bengal, Asham, Ulsa, Jharkhand are the least mechanized state in our country. So this area requires more attention for improving the mechanization, not only this area, but entire country for marginal and small farmers, because they are lagging in mechanization. Okay. So now for understanding the impact of farm mechanization, uh, Production function analysis was performed using mechanization index as one of the independent variables. So, in that production function, complex form of production function was used, in which P indicate total value of paddy output, P is the area of the paddy in hectare, M is the mechanization index of the paddy form. This is cost of seeds used, MF is cost of manure and fertilizer, I is cost of insecticide, 
says capital capital used, cost of human labor, cost of irrigation, right? miscellaneous cost, and T Y is just a plastic figure. So with this, this can be written in log form like this, and using this <coughs> SPSS production function was estimated. And the regression estimates in this paddy production is as follow for all this, <coughs> this uh, all this able production function are good fit giving explaining more than 80% variation in this crop output due to these variables. And here mechanic if, if we see mechanization index coefficient for marginal farmers it is 0 0.010 for a small farmer it is so it is increasing with increasing it is decreasing with increasing farm size this indicate that mi has greater role to play on marginal farm that is mechanization is most required if we mechanize marginal farm in increasing mechanization index by 100% will give 1% increase in output. But in case of medium farm, it will give less than 1% and large farm will give less than 1%. So this indicate that mechanization is contributing in paddy production, significantly contributing Okay, so not only mechanization, other factors are also impacting. Certainly, they need to impact, but here it is, this, this indicates the impact of mechanization or effect of mechanization on fiber production. I also use uh, uh, the center of wheat production there also without similar kind of figure. So, but here I'm only presenting this figure. Okay. If you have any question, you can ask. No question. Or uh, <clears throat> identifying the drivers of farm mechanization. Here also we used this. Doctor Nalini. Uh yeah. In a chat box, yeah. somebody wants previous slide to be explained again. Previous slide means here. In chat box. Okay. Regarding that question which you said, na? so they, they want, <laughs> that is the question. What is previous, what explanation? <laughs> huh. yeah. This one. This slide one in no? so these are the coefficients of production function in log uh, this crop Douglas production function. These coefficients are also known as elasticity of production. So, in addition to other factors uh, on which this crop production depends, that is seed, fertilizer, insecticide, miscellaneous cost, total cost, irrigation, human labor. We have also used mechanization index to see the impact of mechanization. This is proxy of mechanization, machine power. So how it is affecting? So higher the mechanization, this, this indicated that 100% increase in mechanization index will improve output at marginal power rate. Right? One percent on overall basis, it improved by one by one point three percent. So, any doubt? Similarly, uh, in, in the seed also, seed is also important and uh, significantly significantly uh, impacting this production of variety. Here also, seed is also giving good response. Fertilizer is also giving good response. Seed will give 
17% increase between 100% increase in mechanization. This may be due to <coughs> better placement of seed with mechanization. Okay. No question. They will ask questions at the end. Okay. Later on, yeah? Yes, at the end of your. One question is uh, there. Hmm. Which CD production we... function is applicable to agricultural production? Yes, you Certain can see question. these questions in Q and A and chat box. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It is. <coughs> it's a CD function is most used production function in agriculture. Due to its juice and due to its age in use and better interpretation. So drivers of car mechanization for uh, identifying drivers of car mechanization also a log linear form of regression was <coughs> performed in which this Y is a level of car mechanization. So car mechanization level of car for identifying long term car mechanization on yearly basis time series data. I have taken here this tractor intensity, nearly tractor density, tractor density, thousand, uh, tractors per thousand hectare of net zone area as dependent variable as a proxy of car mechanization. Because in India still mechanization is mostly tractorization. Although other sophisticated implements have come into picture, but it will give rough approximation of car mechanization. And therefore I have taken for my yields, this number of tractors per thousand hectare of net zone area every year as dependent variable to represent the level of mechanization and giving a thought that real wage rate and labor in agriculture will influence the use of mechanical power. Per capita electricity consumption will also use uh, influence the use of mechanical power. Road density will use the transportation of machine and therefore may influence use of machine power. Agricultural GDP at constant price. So agriculture in uh, uh, agriculture GDP indicate one sort of income to the farming community. So therefore that will also increase the influence the uh, mechanization level. Cropping intensity is also represent higher the cropping intensity intensity. People have to go for mechanization, otherwise it is not possible with block labor like that. So <coughs> Other variable is institutional credit to agriculture. How agriculture credit is influencing mechanization because most of the tractors purchased in India, in India are purchased through some financial support from institution, institutions. And say, uh, last variable is index of terms of trade between agriculture and non agriculture sectors. This also indicate profitability of agriculture in comparison to other sectors. So they, that may influence the level of mechanization. So with these variables, I run this production by this uh, regression function. So tractor density, when I estimated, this was the tractor density for, which, uh, for different states. During 1617, Haryana was at the highest position with 76.37 tractor per, per thousand uh, <coughs> hectare net zone area. Punjab second, Bihar third, like this, and Kerala at low level. This, this, this indicate how I estimated this tractor density because. <coughs> Assume that a tractor has a life of 10 years and so I'm taking 
10 years addition of 10 years with cell data i added the 10 years figure and make uh, support for a, what is the availability of factor in it to it three so for that i summed up factor cell in india 10 years before so that gives so similar uh, similarly we i estimated the factor dense factor availability of the fifteen section and divided by net zone area and got this figure. So only this five variables retained in this regression. <coughs> and these were the real wage rate, electricity consumption, kilowatt hour per capita, road density, institutional credit and agricultural GDP. So in which this real wage, institutional credit to agriculture and agricultural GDP uh, were highly significant and positive. So that indicate that increasing wage rate has increased the chances of Mechanization. Similarly, this institutional credit availability has also played a great role in improving the mechanization. And agricultural GDP, increase in agricultural GDP has significantly contributed in mechanization of agriculture farms. So these, these are the three factors or three determinants which have influenced mechanization in India in the same process. Because I have taken data from 1991 to 1670. <clears throat> so these are the factors out of which agriculture GDP is highly significant and contributing most. So we need to do all those things to influence, improve the agricultural uh, GDP, increase the agricultural institutional credit to in agriculture and developing non-farm sector that will influence the wage rate and that will contribute towards mechanization of agriculture. So, <coughs> so till now, till now, we understand that make, uh, why mechanization is required, what is the pattern of mechanization in country, what is the trend of mechanization, and how it impacts the agriculture production, and what are the factors determine the mechanization level in the country. Now, what are challenges in farm mechanization in India? Why farm mechanization are not moving? So this first and foremost important factor is dominance of marginal and small farmers in Indian agriculture that jointly contribute about it is more than 86% of total 14.6 crore land holding and account for 47.35 percent of total operated area. So this indicates that farms are very small, that is 1.08 factor size and also fragmented and scattered. When we started India a few ago, the farms are fragmented. The person having one hectare farm will be in a plot of maybe 20 or 25. And a scattered means it is located at 20 odd places. So you can you can visualize the size of farm plot they have on which they have to conduct operation with <coughs> farm machine. So this is the most, so due to the small size, even they, it take more time to complete one operation. And hence, they have to be a more charges, even if they are hiring. So cost of operation increases with reduction, uh, 
reduction in size of farms and the small and marginal farms are having a small plots and therefore they are at disadvantage even in case of hiring or operating their own farm machinery because it takes more time more times more fuel more cost <clears throat> and this fragmentation and shrinkage of farm size will continue in future also due to the rising population and our mm -hmm. our archaic rules and regulation in this country that each and every progeny of a person is having share in that agricultural land that is which is divided equally so it has to be fragmented and distributed so the side will shrink and that will again make difficult for farmers to <coughs> purchase farm machinery, own farm machinery and operate on this farm. Now also high cost and energy efficient farm machinery are very energy now modern farm machinery which are energy efficient they are very costly and poor Indian farmers cannot acquire these assets due to shortage of capital retail. So almost 90 percent of tractors are sold in India with the assistance of some financial sector. So this is one sort of challenge. Another challenge is inadequate quality control of machines. So generally breakdown is more and hence work suffers and operations also suffer. So we all put poor oxygen service. We have developed farmers into just like combine laser developer uh, there but their repair and maintenance activities are still in the area of Punjab so from if there is breakdown in forest far of this machinery the mechanic from Punjab has to go for repair so after sales service is very poor due to mainly lack of trade and power and farmers who are operating these machines are not properly trained also so they do not know how to operate this so these are the some these are some challenges so to meet out this <coughs> poor status of agriculture farmers economic and poor economic condition of agriculture farmers custom hiring centers has come as an innovative solution for meeting out this problem. So it is not a new thing, the custom hiring operation is going in, going in India since long from farmers to farmers and even government has also <coughs> started agro, uh, agro services through which tractors were available on hire but those were not very successful. But in latest, recently in 2014, government of India come out with this custom hiring scheme in which government is trying to establish one custom hiring center in each village. So this custom hiring centers provide farm machinery and rent on rental basis to farmer who cannot afford to purchase high-end agricultural machinery and equipment apart from servicing old machine. CHC, these custom hiring centers are also equipped with this, uh, <coughs> maintenance and repair of farm machines. So they, they need to appoint one person or learn the tools, their skills to repair and maintain the farm machine. The CSC play a vital role in introducing high technology agriculture machinery to small ordinary farmers, which they cannot use on their own. So this is the thinking behind custom hiring center. Why, to, why custom hiring? It's to make available various farm machinery, high quality, high quality farm machinery to a small and marginal farmers. 
then to offset the adverse economic at a scale due to high cost of individual production, to improve mechanization in pastures with low farm power activity, and to expand the mechanized activities during topping season in large area, especially in a small and marginal area. And last one is to provide hiring services for various agricultural machinery, implements, and high value crops specific machines applied for different operations. So some machines are very costly, which an individual farmer in India cannot afford, even with how much large farm, even maximum allowed farm size 15 hectare or 20 hectare farm size cannot afford to buy those high sophisticated farm machines. So it has to be purchased through custom mining center so that it can provide services to large number of farmers to make it economical. So therefore custom mining services is, but I have studied in a state of MP, the performance of custom mining center and there I found some issues that once the custom hiring center allotted to the farmers and individual, after some time it, it, dis, it discontinue this operation and leave the farming and shift to other business or other uh, job, even if he is getting some job of PN in some organization, he leave the custom hiring center due to which the, uh, all the farmers should do becomes useless. So that is not working. Another is some very large farmers also get allotted this uh, custom hiring centers because since they have large land holdings, they cannot get sufficient, they, they could not get time to operate on others' farm. So hence that custom hiring center, which is not a custom hiring center in practice, but only in book it is custom hiring center, but in practice it is farm machinery hold, uh, <coughs> hold by one individual farmer. And unawareness among farmers about this scheme. So most of the farmers are not aware about this scheme and even the benefits of machinery. So they need to be make aware about the benefit as well as this institution. Uh, custom hiring operator were also facing some problems because at the time of the start, they have to borrow from banking system or purchasing the pharmacy as well as government will give some subsidy. So to, to, to getting loan from banks, banks ask collaterals from them in the form of either FT or some property in city, which farmers generally does. So it's a kind of problem they're facing. They're also facing problem of combination of farm machineries approved by this state government that uh, these machinery you have to purchase. Whereas most of the farmers who goes for this custom hiring center, they, ha they are hiring one or two farm machinery. So they want that they should purchase other farm machinery rather than they are holding with them. So that is also their problem. And another problem is government has fixed maximum selling price for individual farm machine, which this dealer exploit. Even if prices of particular meat is lower, they put highest selling price. And in that way, they cheat the farmers when they are purchasing with shelf So such kind of things custom buying these operators are facing and farmers are facing problem of poor economic condition. They generally lack cash for the payment of machine hiring charges. 
generally marginal and small farmers are very poor. They do not have much surplus. And at the time of sowing the patient, they are left with no money to pay the charges for the machine. Because they have to pay for the inputs also. So they, they, they generally require this service on time basis. And a small plot size, which takes comparatively more time to complete farm operation. So a small and marginal farm are facing such kind of problem. Lack of awareness about benefit of modern farm machine days. So most of the marginal and small farmers are not aware about why should we go for mechanization? If I can dig my plot with Kara, why should I go for tractor? If I can harvest by my own, why should I go? Or if I am broadcasting my seed, why should I go for this seed drain? So such kind of things, they are not aware. What are the benefits? Why should they go? So they need to make them aware. So now on the basis of all above discussion, we can conclude that the farm mechanization helps in improving crop yield output, but still there is a huge gap in farm mechanization across farm sites and regions in the country that need to be increased. In addition to other factors, Increased flow of institutional credit to the agriculture sector, increase in agricultural GDP, and an increased real wage rate have driven farm mechanism positive direction. So, easy availability of institutional credit in agriculture will go a long way in improving farm mechanism. Developing non farm sector will <coughs> shift some agricultural labor. That will increase the wage rate, which will force the farmers to go for mechanization. Because mechanization is adding to their income. Earning. Therefore, it is necessary to go for mechanization. And for the purpose, labor has to be shifted by developing non farm sector. Consolidation of land holding and enforcement of land leasing law in all the states particularly in strong region where lands are fragmented. So if, if the farm size is very uneconomical, why a farmer should continue to <coughs> go for agriculture? He can lease out his land to other farmers and work somewhere. So that will give some income to that person as well as income to the function. So that will also increase the size of operational land holding. That will sustain the pace of farm mechanization, easy availability of farm machinery on high and affordable drain to small and marginal farmers is must without which they cannot afford to use farm machinery on their farm. Therefore a strengthening and a scaling of custom hiring services is need the power to improve farm mechanization in the country. How to strengthen the custom hiring center? Allocating CHC to only those youths who have land and have experience in cultivation for at least two, three years after education to ensure its continuity as CHC operators in long term. Compulsory skill development of allotic custom hiring operators in upkeep and handling of farm machineries as well as modern farming techniques so that they can become an extension agent because he or she has to operate in, on other farms. If he knows modern farming techniques, he can benefit other farms. Giving freedom to custom hiring operators in selecting improved farm machinery and implements and establishing workshop of, for repair and maintenance of improved farm machinery in interland to make it easily available to the farmers and subsidizing farm operation for marginalizing the small farmers for their easy access. Thank you.
very much now you can ask any sort of clarification or question related to whatever i have discussed there are uh, some questions in the chat box mm -hmm. uh, should i read or you will go on your own anita has just asked sir which website gives us correct data on metabolization which yes factors availability in india uh, you, you can visit this uh, directorate of economics government of india uh, ministry of agriculture government of india on which you can get sell and sell and sell of tractors annual sell of tractors in india so you can get based on your study in 2015 what proportion of agriculture can be utilized and its impact on this large unemployment which in the great on then there is another question yeah can direct benefit transfer payment for mechanization majorly on hiring charge will help the medium and the small farmers for best it like chc okay so this may work direct benefit transfer to farmers will at the time of sowing operation certainly will improve the cash availability with them and they can go for uh, this uh, hiring formation and i have not projected what will be scenario in 2030 but certainly with the pace we are farm uh, mechanization is improving in india we will be able to provide Farmers do throughout the country to most of the farmers, and <clears throat> this is this is guided unemployment. I think it is mechanization will not play a role in this guided unemployment till farmers are not trained, not skilled. Up. so young generation are getting proper skill and government is emphasizing on skill is recently you see the government has come out with massive massive scheme of skill development it is government is going to open university so that even working people can is skill up their skills and even every everyone is going to be given some skills so they will be getting job as per their skill so this guy is running employment i don't think it is going to increase but certainly it will decrease agriculture employment and farm mechanization how this can be matched in modern agriculture matching we have to create more non non farm job non farm opportunity in this rural area so that this farm labor or farm person dependent on agriculture can move to non farm and side by side this mechanization will reach their farm farm operation so that will be nice this is the one way improve customer hiring center services increase the number of customer hiring services and go for non farm <coughs> opportunity in that area customer hiring center is also non farm this will also improve the non farm activity in this region in the form of maintenance and repairs and this is this job of tractor operator job of this operators of farm machinery so all things will go side by side and i think we have bright future and this will help in this modern thank you sir thank you sir but uh, what i feel is that 
uh, we are talking about agriculture labor policy yeah. and the other side we are talking about uh, digitalized farming and uh, five usage of uh, farm mechanization mm -hmm. and we are uh, we are plan to increase the livelihood of uh, small and marginal farmers yeah yeah so how this farm mechanization is going to cope up them yeah sir this mechanization of improved farmers entry is possible through custom hiring centers only a small and marginal farmers cannot afford to go for such kind of <coughs> machine with, with their own so once mechanization will improve i also talked about, uh, suggested about land leasing policy so that they can move to other business other non farm of uh, non farm activity by leasing their small farms to other other farmers who are interested in cultivating their land without any fear you and the area under cultivation will get reduced no sir if, how if there is a shift in cultivation or shift in farming practice it goes to the non farm product means uh, the existing uh, farming product for farmers they will be get affected no existing farmers will get affected how they will voluntarily leave this field with increase in non farm sector they will voluntarily shift toward that due to better pasture better opportunity in non farm sector not due to force they will not be forced to leave just like now they are not being forced to leave so improvement in non farm sector where wage rate earnings is more so a small farmer less than 1 hectare farmers which are accounting for about 76% uh, 7 more than yeah 70% of population uh, farmer do you think that they are economical they are earning sufficient money than uh, this wage laborers in urban cities so till they are managing their farms by integrating many components of this agriculture for the better use and earning handsome money for their survival they will continue they will even lease the lease the lands of others otherwise they have to if they are skilled they can move to non farm sector if it is getting developed thank you sir so is there um, anyone from uh, dr akka are you there yes ma'am yes ma'am yes so i would like to request you to propose a vote of thanks from your participant side uh, sir you can unshare your screen okay yes and um, uh, uh, one minute one minute sir uh, for uh, like there are two questions in q and a also from okay. uh, dr ganga devi regarding uh, they want some publication on mechanization uh, okay. for uh, their reading purpose if you give it to us we will share with them Okay. And another is uh, how the real wage rates influence the mechanization. The real wage rates increases the cost of cultivation, and real wage rate is indication of unavailability of sufficient labor during peak hours. So that forces farmers to go for other option, cheaper option, and farmers simply. operation through farm machinery is cheaper option so therefore farmers go for this mechanization mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. are you satisfied ganga devi okay oh, hai uh, 11:30 se hamari bhi hai but kisi aur se main bolti hu करने के लिए किसी और प्लेटफॉर्म से ठीक नहीं 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 ठीक सो वी कैन टेक 
some literature from madam i will share to madam okay so welcome to all yeah so dr akka yes ma'am yes, ma so first of all good evening sir and uh, good evening to all so it's my great privilege to propose a word of thanks to dr nalini kumar sir i on behalf of all the panelists and uh, attendees i extend my word of thanks to dr nalini kumar sir so who took out a valuable time and uh, he shared a very fruitful information especially on the current scenario in the farm mechanization as well as challenges and uh, how to solve such challenges in the farm mechanization so once again thank you so much sir for uh, sharing the valuable information to us thank you thank, thank you, you very much to all thank you thank you sir thank you. thanks a lot for joining uh, and giving this very useful lecture participants interacted very well with you uh, some are in attendee mode but they have asked in question form they could not directly chat uh, depending on the limitation of uh, the it facilities which are available thank you very much thank you thank you much uh, i also extend my thanks to dr nanda ranjit kumar uh, for uh, Uh, sparing is available time as well as uh, giving a very good uh, lecture to all our participants they might be benefited with this thank you sir thank you very much daksham for uh, thank you extending your thanks for delivering my lecture thank you thank you so uh, now we have uh, another faculty uh, dr somin pal uh, is there from isri <laughs> so i would briefly like to introduce uh, my participants to him uh, dr somin pal you can switch on your video okay he is there chauhan ji can you uh, make it uh, yes so um, yes now uh, i would just like to briefly introduce my participants to dr somin pal who has around uh, 12 years of experience in research as well as he is a teaching faculty in pg school of iri and uh, he has wide areas of interest basically a statistician but he has uh, got knowledge of web technology statistical modeling and information systems mobile applications development and uh, he has uh, also acquired knowledge of this open source software knowledge actually the belief is that uh, uh, software packages are not available to everyone in universities so now slowly statisticians they are trying to shift towards this open source software r he has already given the link to you in the morning which was shared to you uh, with my colleague uh, from my colleague dr dilip and uh, i hope you have downloaded in case some problems are there he would definitely be able to uh, tell you the tricks for that and uh, besides uh, this he is also involved in e governance project and uh, uh, he has written several papers on statistical modeling and uh, it domain so uh, uh, teaching various courses and he has also conducted training on this r software 21 days only on r so uh, that is uh, something uh, wonderful so i thought it is appropriate to have uh, a faculty uh, like dr somin pal who is an expert in r to teach you some basics of r in this particular training we will try to have as much as possible lectures in r for the techniques which you will be learning but sometimes it is not possible because all faculty are not conversant with r but you can the knowledge which you gain from this lecture will be sufficient to apply any trick to r so once again um, thank you very much doc sir for accepting our request so now like the floor is yours i invite you to take your lecture other uh, uh, like you can continue up to 5:30 uh leaving some time for their question answers so um thank you madam thank yeah. you very much thank you, uh, thank thank you much. Uh, for uh, or, thank you the organizers for giving me op the opportunity to deliver or share my experience in this training program and uh, thank you madam for your nice introduction so let us start with the class yes 
Okay, uh, let me share my screen. Uh, is the screen visible? Yes, the screen is visible. Okay, so very good afternoon to all of you. So as Madam told that uh, in this particular uh, lecture, we will be discussing on uh, our software. And uh, there are two aspects. One is to install the software and uh, then use it. And then there are various uh, functions or we can say various uh, commands. Those are uh, to be used in the R software. Okay. So uh, I already shared the link uh, through the organizers to you uh, regarding from where you can download the R software R, as well as R studio. So I hope that uh, you have downloaded already download the, downloaded the software, required software. Uh, please let me know in case uh, you are finding any difficulty in installing that. Uh, if not, then uh, I expect that uh, all of you have uh, downloaded the software and installed in your respective uh, system. Right? Okay, so just let me unshare this one and just share this one. Okay. <clears throat> so first of all, uh, why we use our software, right? Mm -hmm. So R, as uh, many of you may be knowing that uh, this is an open source software. Open source so software means this is a free software, okay? This is uh, available, uh, you can download and install and use it uh, without uh, putting any cost, okay, any fees for this. So in that sense, it is uh, open source software or we can say free software. Now, uh, why are, okay. So as you know that uh, as of now, we are heavily depending on software for analysis and uh, for analysis, uh, if we are having the software which is freely available and but robust in analysis, then obviously that will be a very good for us to use that particular software. So in this direction, nowadays the open source software are very popular like R, then Python, right? Uh, so you must have heard about at least about these two. So R is basically a, a statistical software we can say, and uh, Python is also uh, kind of uh, that kind of software, but mainly used for uh, machine learning purpose nowadays. So uh, we will quickly discuss why we use R, or uh, we can say that uh, what are the advantages uh, in using R software, okay. So uh, as I mentioned, that is first of all, it is a free software environment for statistical computing. And uh, this particular software is available for across the platforms, okay. No, I have just uh, changed the slide, okay. From slide one to uh, means page one, I have moved to page two. Is this visible? Is it? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So uh, then uh, this particular software is available for uh, different platforms. Like you can use it in uh, Windows as well as uh, Linux environment or Mac uh, for different uh, platforms, different versions are available. Uh, then uh, the next thing is that uh, here the various statistical techniques or you can say the pathologies those are available in uh, terms of packages okay so we will uh, see since what are the package and then how to install in and uh, load it we will see so you can see that uh, 
the latest statistical data because R is used mainly among the researchers or academicians. So what are the latest technologies or methodologies uh, if they publish uh, in the form of uh, package, those are freely available uh, across the globe, okay? So you can just uh, install that particular package and you can use that particular functionality. And uh, for each and every packages, there is one help file that is uh, also there, uh, help manual. So you can go through all the methods that are available into that package and can use accordingly, right? So this is a big advantage of using our software. Then uh, we can say, uh, what is the um, kind of, uh, we can say a disadvantage for some in the sense, like you have to program. This is not a uh, just click-based software, okay? Like SPSS, you do certain uh, means clicks and you get the result. So you have to write your, uh, own program means whether it may be a one liner it may be 10 line or it may be 100 line depending on what you want to do with the software right what kind of analysis you are performing and as well as it is an advantage in that sense like when you do your own okay you write your own program you will be having better understanding of what you are actually doing okay sometimes the softwares like they uh, appear to us as a black box. Uh, we give certain input and they produce certain output and what is uh, going in the in between that we don't understand actually. Okay. So there is always a scope to understand it better whatever you are writing uh, in R as a R program. Okay. So it will be better understanding of the methodologies or techniques that you are using. A uh, few more advantages uh, are like this, uh, like it is a very good graphical support, okay. You can produce very good graphics uh, in R, okay, and uh, some dedicated packages are also there uh, for enhancing the uh, graphics things in R, okay. So you will be having very good uh, number of packages dedicatedly for uh, the graphics, okay. So these are some advantages uh, in using R, okay. Then uh, if we see just the origin of R means how this uh, name of R came. So it was named after two uh, persons, Robert Gentleman and Ross Ihaka, uh, they were from the uh, Statistics Department at the University of Auckland. They started this project uh, on R in 1995, and hence uh, the initials of those two persons start with R. So that is why the software has been named as R. Now R, uh, by R, the name of the software is R, as well as the language that is used in this uh, part software that is also called R, right? So R is the name of the software as well as the programming language that you will be using that is also called R, okay? And it is a, uh, it was started long back like in 1970s uh, with the language which is called S language uh, that was developed at the Bell Laboratory, okay? There was a famous Bell Laboratory where C was also developed, okay? And then uh, from there, S language, uh, the S plus systems that was developed, but later on, it was uh, gone into some other direction <clears throat> and this R evolved, okay. So we go directly into the R environment. So uh, before that, uh, when you install R, uh, you will see there will there are uh, different uh, versions like one is 32 bit and 64 bit different versions are there and uh, after installing uh, the icon is available on your desktop and when you click it you go into the r environment now i in this uh, r we use uh, several gui also okay 
So R, R itself can R itself can uh, okay yes okay okay fine uh, in between I, I I was just checking the chat okay if there was any a message for me. <clears throat> Uh, so what I was telling that uh, when you uh, go to the R, uh, so here you can also write your program, okay, and do all your analysis. But what happens that on top of this uh, R environment, we produce uh, another GUI. And uh, here we will be using as a GUI what is called the R Studio. Okay, so it was most popular. GUI on R. So at the back end, the R engine is running at the core. Okay. And on top of that, there is some graphical user interface that is provided uh, with the R Studio. So why do you use such GUI? Because of uh, ease of using this particular software. Like you can see, uh, there are several separate, separate windows in R Studio, and uh, those will be uh, helpful. Uh, when we writing and uh, um, executing our code okay and there is a separate uh, graphical user window then there is some uh, environmental variables window there is a console window okay those kinds of thing and uh, when we try to import and export the files uh, from here that is also very much uh, you can do with ease when using the r studio so that is why on top of r we provide this gui okay <clears throat> So I just unshare it and I share it, share the R environment that is the R studio with you. So is this environment visible to you, the R studio? Is the R studio visible to all? Yes, sir, it is visible. Yeah, uh, so in the uh, left hand pane, you can say in the upper side. So this is the code editor portion where we used to write the, our code, okay. This is the code window basically. Here we write to, used to write the code. And the code, what we write, that is executed in this console section, okay. Then uh, in the right hand side, you can see, that uh, there are different tabs in the upper hand side. One is environment, then history, then connection, tutorial, those kind of thing. Okay. So uh, basically, whatever the variables we will be using, those variables you will find it here along with their values. So that is not that much important. We can say now there is one uh, very important tab that is available here. That is the import data set. Okay, so we will see how it works when we do uh, importing data set into the R environment. And in the uh, right hand side bottom window, here you can see uh, files, then plots. So plot means the graphics that we generate uh, using R code that will be populated here into this plot, then packages. So we will see that uh, what are the different packages, uh, those are available uh, in the R. And there are some base packages actually, uh, those are already available with the installation when you install the R. Okay, now apart from these base packages, if you want to uh, use some specific package, then how to uh, install that package and use that package that we will also see. Then there is one uh, help tab uh, here, uh, the functions that are used in R uh, for each and every functions, the help manual is given. Okay, and this is also very, uh, we can say robust help manual and uh, okay. So these tabs are important. Okay. Now, uh, first of all, uh, you can see this particular file uh, here i have uh, put certain things in commented form okay so when you use the hash in our environment so that means it is commented okay you can see uh, these are coming in some separate color so that means these are 
comments only the comments in the programming language we use to make comments for clarification what that particular code is doing okay now you remember one more thing that this is r is case sensitive language okay case sensitive means uh, if you write uh, x small x and you write capital x those then those two will be separate variable not the same okay and if you want to access uh, suppose you define your variable with the name capital x and you want to access it with the small x then you will not be able to access that particular variable value of that particular variable okay so this is case sensitive now in this particular uh, lecture we will discuss about uh, some uh, data types uh, if you have have certain understanding on programming language you know that each and every uh, programming there is certain data types uh, that we use so we will be discussing only uh, two three data types those are very important uh, when you deal with the our environment and uh, then uh, we will see how the functions are written in r uh, how we get uh, printed the different value of the variables in r uh, then we will see uh, the export import means how do you uh, import file uh, import your data set into the r environment uh, then we will see that uh, how to use uh, a particular package uh, install and load that particular package into the current R environment. Uh, then we will see possibly if time permits that some graphics. Okay, how do you generate graphics? What are the corresponding function or commands for that? So that we will discuss. Right. Uh, so far, uh, is there any question from participants? or please be interactive means if all of you have installed the software or you have having any difficulty in installing that or do you have any query till now sir yeah sir why we want to use r studio instead of r what is the difference between r and r studio uh, that that's what i have told you now that you can use simply r there is no problem okay but uh, on top of r we use certain uh, user graphical user interface that will facilitate the user its user uh, to some extent like uh, i have shown you like importing data set okay and there are several few things that is uh, that can be easily handled when we will be using the r studio otherwise the functionality wise they are same means uh, whatever uh, you can do with R Studio, we can do everything with our environment. But this, in addition to that, uh, there is some, uh, we can say, uh, functionalities in our environment, in R Studio, that will uh, facilitate the uh, user to interact more easily with the software. Okay, so that is why we use it. You can experience both, you can use R, Okay, then uh, you can come to the R Studio and you can see the difference. Okay. Thank you, Otherwise, sir. functionality wise, there is no problem. Any other question? Okay, if not, so we just quickly go through uh, this file I have already shared with you, this code file. Now, uh, there are two things like uh, you can directly run your command into the console and as well as you can use this editor okay for writing and running the r functions or commands now what is the difference there is no difference as such like uh, i have uh, you can use the same commands in those two places the advantage is that if you uh, create your own R file, then it will be uh, easy to refer when you refer it further, okay. Otherwise, what you can do means you can run your, uh, copy your R commands, you can put any file like a notepad, 
or any but sheet or but file okay you can just simply copy those commands next time and just put into this console and you can also run there is no problem but uh, if you uh, just save your all the commands in a particular uh, file okay that will be beneficial to use that will be easy to refer I means suppose uh, if you are in a project you are uh, doing some different different activities and for that you create different uh, r files okay so that will be helpful to track or refer okay so that is the advantage and one more thing is that in this particular environment you can just simply uh, import that uh, r file code file into this environment and you just uh, run it at a time okay so there are certain advantages and obviously some uh, in clarity of this uh, code is also there when you are using the r script like you can see here that i have put my comments and then uh, one by one i have mentioned the functions or comments so it will be helpful in referring so how do you start oh, you you can find that uh, uh, one thing like uh, if i just cross it Okay, so you may be having uh, first time you will getting this, not the top window, you will be not getting the editor one. So what do you have to do? You have to just click on the file, then you go to the new file and then click on the R script. So when you uh, click on the R script, uh, this script uh, will appear, means the editor will appear. So there you can just uh, put write your code line by line and then can execute, okay. Then how to execute this? Suppose uh, we start with the basic functionalities of R that it may be used as simple as a calculator. Like we are adding two plus two, two plus seven, okay. So how do you run it? So you put your cursor anywhere in this particular line to run a line, okay. You can put it here, put it anywhere. Your cursor is blinking here and here you are getting uh, the run button so what is that run the current line or selection means you can just put your cursor here and you just put on run okay or you can just select this one okay and then you can run okay the selection may be part of a line or a full line or selection can be for the uh, more than one line multiple lines at a time Okay, so you can just select and then run, then it will run. Okay. So I just run it. So you see here, uh, the command that we have used that is mirrored here in the console, as well as the output. Okay, so the output always comes with the, this uh, number. Okay. <clears throat> so you just uh, copy the code that I have provided to you and you can run simultaneously with me to have an understanding of this. So uh, you can see this is as simple as addition. This is uh, division, uh, okay. And uh, addition and division two operators are using here. Then you can see uh, in R, we are having uh, functions, okay. so. If you know about the programming language, you know what is a function. You know the function like this way. And then in the uh, functions, what you pass, you pass actually the parameter. Okay. Just a moment. Please wait.
Okay, sorry. <clears throat> then uh, you can see here that uh, square root okay so uh, this sqrt this is used for square root so square root of 9 is what square root of 9 is 3 okay so 3 plus then this is uh, this symbol will be used for 2 the power so uh, 5 square basically okay so if you run it so we get the desired output similarly we can use some algebraic functions like sine cos logarithm exponential those kinds of thing okay so we get like this then we come to the important concept what is called the r variables okay <clears throat> so as a programming language when we uh, use certain uh, value like my 2 plus 7 or uh, any particular value 5 10 3 4 or any character value whatever it may be so we can assign it as a variable you know, so that what will happen that uh, in the later uh, part where those particular calculations uh, need to be done we can use simply the variable we need not write like 2 plus 7 uh, everywhere okay instead of that we can use simply use the variable name so that it will be helpful so <clears throat> the next thing is that how do you assign the variable into r so assignment of variables uh, can be done in uh, many ways okay <clears throat> So one way is that uh, we use this uh, equal sign, okay, as an operator, assignment operator. Uh, we can use uh, in this uh, direction also, okay. Uh, you will find mostly this type of symbol uh, when you refer any code, okay. And for simplification, we can also use the equal sign, okay that is same okay now uh, when you do this uh, i have assigned this v1 and v2 value you see here in the environment section uh, that values against v1 that is stored as 9 and for v2 it is stored at 0 0.25 okay uh, so this uh, in variables are saved into my present r session Okay, now we can use those variables as many times as we wish or as requirement. Then how to uh, print uh, the value of that particular variable? One way is that you just simply uh, write V1, okay, or you just select V1 and you just run. So you will get the uh, value. Okay, what is the value? Means this is as good as we are printing the value of a particular variable whether it contains a single value or it may contain multiple values okay or you can just write instead of that uh, here you can just write v2 and then run so you, you will also get the value okay and for clarity what we can do we can use certain print function and in the print function as argument we pass on the variables like v1 v2 and we get the same output okay we get the same output so what we have learned so far that r can be used as simple as a calculator then we have to uh, define certain uh, variables uh, into r and then we can uh, provide any value to them and we can create the uh, how do you print the values of those variables okay that much we have learned so far then uh, data types different data types uh, we will be discussing so the most important one that is the or we can say the basic one that is the vector okay so vector you know this is the uh, combination of an array of similar data types okay that is called the vector now uh, when you use certain vector like here we have uh, used certain expression to put the value into the variable b see if we want to define certain vectors we have to use function c c means this is the short form for combine okay so these are all the base functions those are already available with the installation that we have done with the that come across with the r installation these are the base comes under the base packages okay for that 
we don't need to install any particular package for this okay <clears throat> so there are uh, five elements you can see uh, like 10.4 5.6 likewise so we can uh, assign these five numbers to the vector x okay so we just run this so our, our vector is created now if you print this x you run this so you get what are the different values that are stored uh, in the x variable so these are the values uh, which are stored into the x variable and you can see that uh, the well there are five uh, va uh, basically values those are stored into x in va x variable and uh, it's from one to five and those are these okay you can see here so here i have made the assignment in the reverse order like when you use this kind of symbol you always remember the direction should be towards the variable okay here you can write in reverse order like you can just uh, write the vector first and then you can assign this one to x so uh, in which side the variable will be there you have to put the direction towards that okay or simply you can write x is equal to this okay by using this equal operator so this is how we use the vectors assignment then uh, we have uh, seen simply arithmetic like division multiplication then we can find vector arithmetic okay some common arithmetic functions and we pass the uh, argument as a vector here like log x so what we will get we will get the logarithm of each of the individual elements what are there in our vector x so if you run this we will get the five different values for x similarly for exponentiation we get like this then we sine cos then tan square root okay sqrt so you get like this got it <coughs> then uh, we now you see that these are very synonymous to the corresponding uh, name of the functions okay logarithmic for that function name is log exponentiation the corresponding function name is exp for sine cos name is same okay square root sqrt okay now we go towards certain uh, few <clears throat> uh, towards the advancement like then uh, we want to get what is the maximum number out in that particular vector that we have used so for that what do we use the function max okay if we done that so you know what is the different values of x this one and we you know what is the maximum value uh, that is a 21.7 similarly if we get uh, the minimum one to get so this is the minimum value in the vector okay then we can get the range what is the range that that means that a range is uh, varying from maximum to minimum okay so you will get the range here 3.1 to 21.7 then if we uh, want to know the number of elements in a vector okay the length of a vector so basically we use length so five there are five elements in a particular vector then we want to sum all the elements okay so we get the sum or we sort okay so we sort this is your in the ascending order okay or we can say increasing order now <clears throat> in the functions of r they support multiple parameters okay or the arguments in a single function so you will be uh, experiencing this in most of the functions like here we use the sort so by default it is what by default it is in the increasing order now if you want to change the order so for that you have to use the additional parameter okay so uh, how do you get it uh, then you have to write as decreasing is equal to then some boolean function that is true or false either you write so by default it is false if you want to make it true the decreasing one you write it cap t so you will get like this okay this is it is in the decreasing order okay now you can say that how do you know that uh, what are the different arguments 
that is used in a particular function. So for that, uh, we use a certain help file that we will come across uh, later also we can. Okay, so how to write it? That uh, question mark, then the function name and then the parenthesis. This, this is the symbol of a function. So if you run it, You see here, sort, okay. So you get the usage, how to uh, use the, in the help file basically, okay. So these are the different arguments that are mentioned here, like X, X is what? X is your data, then whether it is decreasing or increasing, then some other uh, parameters are there. So you get the list of the parameters and what is the meaning of those parameters? How do you use those? Uh, in the in this particular help file okay and also the references and examples for the so exhaustive uh, help file for each of the functions that are there okay then we uh, discuss about uh, one more uh, data uh, structure that is called array so array is uh, something similar to vector, but what is the difference? Difference is that uh, in the array, basically you can make it uh, two dimensional or more than two dimensional, okay. Like you can say that uh, we want to generate a uh, uh, two dimensional array that is four by five. Okay. So, uh, this particular parameter, this is used to mention the dimension. So, my dimension will be four by five. And when you uh, use this, you see, you have to put it C. Okay. Because we uh, use the vector as a parameter, as a value of your parameter. Okay. And uh, in that particular array, we used to put the number, we used to initialize the array with. 1 to 20, number 1 to 20, okay. So if I run this and uh, if we just see, so this kind of array we will be getting, okay. So starting from 1 up to 20, so it is 4 by 5 array. And similarly, you can uh, also create three-dimensional array also, okay, like this. Okay, this is the three-dimensional array that we can. So this is another data type that we will be frequently using. So far it is uh, okay with you. Any question up to this? Sir, we are not finding that uh, our sorting or ordering vectors, that uh, fourth quadrant, uh, it's missing, uh, not missing. Actually what we are doing, it's not uh, replicated there. What we have to do? Here. Simultaneously, we are also trying so that uh, it's showing that uh, only files and other things. So there we have to give some space or anything we have to select to show that or uh, to it, save that. Uh, you, are, you are talking about this particular command that we are using? Not particular command, sir, that mm -hmm. uh, in our studio, mm -hmm. the fourth quadrant where the results mm -hmm. are displaying, so in your case, it's like uh, below the files and uh, plot. Console, 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 na? this yeah, one. Yeah, not Achha. console, sir. Uh, Achha, this one, this one, yeah, help. Yeah. Huh. This is for help only. Where help, okay, okay, okay. Sir. Okay, this is not the output. Output we are getting in the console window. Okay, okay. sir. Okay. This is the help file, no problem. Okay. Okay. Sir, how we can save this one consoled part or what we have to save in, uh, say, for example, we have do, done the analysis, then what portion we have to save? There are different options. Either you can just uh, take the output like this. This this can be copy pasted. Okay. okay. Where, you, uh, where you want to put your results. Mm -hmm. Or uh, there is certain option, like uh, you can redirect your output to a particular file. That option mm -hmm. is also there. That is some kind of advanced kind of thing. Not advanced, I can say. 
means we have uh, we have to know that means uh, the output file that we can name one particular output file and whatever comments we will be executing that will be saved or concatenated into that particular output file that option is also there okay the simple option is you just copy it uh, in the desired format how we want to uh, get it and then you just paste it where you are just uh, mentioning your output like word file or whatever it may be excel okay. file okay. then we come across uh, any further question from anybody else okay so we go through another uh, very important uh, data type that is called the matrix okay so all you know uh, most probably what is matrix so the corresponding function name is matrix itself okay now uh, how do you use the different parameters in the matrix function that one data will be there uh, like in array we provided the data then in row that is the number of row then the next one is number of column okay and then uh, one by row by row means whether the elements are arranged uh, sequentially by row or not so what you can put you can put here as a true or false so for true you can just simply write caps t instead of t r u v true you can just simply put t also so this is basically a logical one okay true or false so you see one example like m m is one matrix we want to define this is the variable name m so uh, what we are storing here uh, that you are from 3 to 14 and what will be the number of row number of row in my matrix will be 4 and here i make the by row true so if you run it or just print m uh, okay so you will see so it is uh, storing from starting from 3 to 14 and by row is equal to 2 means uh, in the increasing order row wise 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 and if you make it false so what will happen so you see it's coming column wise that is a 3 4 5 6 first column second column 7 8 9 10 and the third column 11 12 13 14 okay so you can perform all the operations in matrix like matrix addition matrix multiplication uh, matrix inverse uh, matrix transpose okay all that functionality okay so i'm just cut shorting those things and not going into details of all these uh, things okay the next we come across the most important data type uh, in r that is called the data frame Basically, when you will be importing any data set, uh, what it may be your simply the txt file, it may be the csv file, it may be the excel file. So what you will do, uh, you will when you import the data into your R environment, it will be in the form of data frame only. Okay. So what we will do, we will just uh, make one uh, data frame. We will prepare one data frame. Okay, and then we will use this particular data frame here so as you can see <clears throat> how do you create one particular data frame like here i have make uh, used one variable name make okay and here what we are doing uh, we want to uh, create one uh, data set for cars different type of cars okay so for that different uh, companies are there and their model are there then uh, the cylinder type of those cars are there cars weight are there then they are what is the, the mileage of those cars and what is the type of those cars means whether uh, that is sport car or compact or small sedan like this okay <clears throat> this kind of thing so what you will do uh, you can see this particular example where you use this uh, function data dot frame and in the data dot frame what you do we passed the uh, different uh, variables that we have used 
to create this particular data frame. And each of these uh, variable, uh, basically we have passed several values. Means uh, these all these are vectors. Okay, different type of vector. This is a character type of vector because we have used only the strings. Okay. <clears throat> then uh, you can see in the model, like we have used different uh, model names. Oh. And then uh, in the cylinder type, uh, we used like it is a B4, B5, B6 version. Okay. This REP, this uh, stands for repeat, means B4. Uh, it repeats for five times v6 it repeats for three times like this then we put the weight of different car models uh, then uh, we put the mileage suppose and then we put the type uh, again we use certain vectors uh, like uh, using c and then small is repeated uh, three times like this so uh, you don't have to very much bother about this because generally we are having the data set and we will be using the data frame as a data structure. But here just for your understanding, I am showing you that what are the different components of a particular data frame, okay, and how uh, if we want to create it and how we can create it, okay. So, so ultimately we name our data frame as car, C-A-R, car, okay, and what is the corresponding function name? That is the data dot frame. So, you can come across some uh, functions which will be having uh, means uh, separated by uh, dot okay means the function name contains certain dot like data dot frame okay not data frame data dot frame okay so uh, we uh, use uh, pass those variables and we have uh, you, we get our desired data frame so i just run this one run and then we uh, just uh, select this car one and this run. Now you can see my data is prepared. So these are this particular data is having 10 rows and uh, we are having five different variables under this data set and each will be having different values and my data set is created. And what is the type of the data set? Type of the data set is data frame. Okay, then we, uh, what is the beauty of using data frame that we can put several uh, different functions over our data frame. Okay, there is a lot of flexibility in uh, representing the data or doing some operations uh, on data frame. So that is why data frame is very much important data type. Like you can see, like uh, we can use names. So what does it mean? So by name, we can see what are the different variables name of your data frame. Okay, so that we are using here. Fine. <clears throat> Similarly, now uh, it will have I means you come across uh, often this type of um, problem like uh, you don't need uh, the full data set for your analysis. You need a part of your data set for a particular analysis. Okay. So uh, we need to uh, extract the information partially. Okay. So how do you do that? So you see here. Uh, when we use this uh, bracket kind of bracket, third bracket, okay. So that means uh, we are mentioning the row as well as, as well as the column number, okay, uh, for that particular data set or data frame. So my first uh, will be representing the row number and after comma, uh, the next one will be representing the column number. And after comma, uh, if there is means uh, the num row or column is missing, and just simply put comma, that means uh, all row or all columns. For example, like here we have, I have mentioned car one comma, then there is nothing. That means we get all the columns of first row. We want to extract the information of all uh, the column values in the first row, okay, in our data set. So you just run it, so you see here, this is my, first row and we get uh, the variables under different columns and you just reverse it what you will get you will get the uh, suppose you just write uh, this one mm, you put here blank you put here one okay so what you will get so you will get you can see that your first column only okay the number of uh, here, 
it indicates what it indicates it indicates the all of the rows it indicates all of the rows of first column okay so you get you see here that you get the values which is in the first column okay for all the rows then uh if you want to uh want to get the value of a particular column okay so there are two options either you use some dollar symbol like after car with some dollar symbol uh, we mention the uh, name of that particular column so you can directly access the different values of that particular column okay so if i just uh, see the I want to check the mileage of different cars we run it we get the values of for 10 different models of the car and uh, this mileage is in the uh, which column this one two three four fifth fifth column okay so the same uh, similar uh, means equivalent expression for this will be car comma then five so that means we will extract all the rows of fifth column if we run this we will get the same result Okay. Now there is also uh, possible that you put some uh, mathematical operation or statistical operation uh, on the part of your data frame or the entire data frame. Okay. Like we want to uh, know what is the average mileage of the 10 vehicles. So the corresponding uh, so you want to uh, get the command file in whatsapp group okay i think uh, dilip are you there you can send the command file in the whatsapp group sir it's already sent okay okay fine so <laughs> we get the mean so what is the value of that mean okay this is 25.9 okay so we get the mean of this similarly if we uh, want to get a frequency table out of that like based on card type Okay, so we get that this is the frequency of different cut type, like compact to large one, medium to this kind of thing. And we also, there is a possibility of cross tabulation, like uh, this type, okay. So it's a two-way table that this side, the uh, make is there and this type, the type is there and you get the frequency from this two-way table, okay. so many different types of mathematical or we can say statistical operations those are possible on the data frame so that is why data frame is very much important right uh, up to this is this okay to all yes sir okay fine uh, then uh now we come to the next stage that is creating the data objects uh, okay so either we have our one file or even we have the provision to create our data set into the r environment also so how do you do that so r is having uh, one uh, facility of data editor okay which can provide a spreadsheet kind of thing for data editor as a data editor so for that what is the corresponding uh, function name that is the edit and inside edit you put pass the variable that data dot frame this way okay and we put the what uh, what is data to basically whatever we want to uh, create means our data set we name that particular data set as a data to like here we have used the name car Okay, whatever the data frame that we have created, we name it as a car. Car is your entire data frame. Okay, similarly here, what do you want to uh, create? That we uh, want to put that name as a set data to. Okay, it may be XYZ, whatever it may be. Okay, so if you just run it, you run it, so you will get this kind of uh, data editor. Okay, so where, uh, I, I am not sure that uh, I have shared a particular window in the 
uh, zoom so is this data editor visible to you the additional window that is popping up appearing on the top of this r studio is this visible no sir. no no or yes no sir okay okay sorry uh just a moment stops here then i yeah so this kind of uh data editor uh, that you will be getting here okay so here uh, you just click on this uh, variable editor. So again, I think there is certain option to share my whole screen. How do you do that? Mm. So, sir, you just share your uh, entire screen, sir. Only screen, na? Yeah, I think you are sharing only your uh, particular window. Now, now, now is it, this now it is all right. Uh, yeah. Now it is visible. Ah, okay. So uh, the variable editor, like uh, you can uh, just uh, change the name, like variable one. I I can put it like a, okay, and it may be numeric or character that we can select the type. I just then uh, I I can write b. It may be say character, okay, or numeric, whatever it may be. So I just put uh, likewise, okay. So you can put it, fine. So my data has been created. Uh, if I uh, want to see what is my data two. So you see there are two variables A and B and the values are these, okay. That we can get from here. So by this way, we can also create our data, okay. Then uh, we come across the important thing that is how to import the data. I just show you the uh, through uh, means mouse click, then it will be easier for you initially. So there is, you can say that one uh, import data set uh, is there, menu is there, you click on it. Now, when you click on it, you see there are different options like from text. Then within parentheses, you used to see base, then from text, read R. So what is the base? Base means base package. Basically, you were using the base package that I mentioned earlier, that the base package come along with the uh, installation of R. Okay. Then from text, that is the read R. Okay, so that is a particular package you can use. Then from Excel, we can also use from SPSS, SAS, Tata. So all the different type of data sets can be imported here, but it may require that you need to install the package for uh, importing different kind of data set. Okay, like when you click on the from text or the first one base, so it will not needed to install any packages or but when you uh, do from Excel for the first time, so at the background, what will happen that the uh, that required package will start to download and install if you are connected uh, with the uh, internet, okay. So that is why we use RStudio uh, for these kinds of uh, functionalities. So I just show you first of all from text that is the base. So when I click this, so this is the, uh, you just select here, uh, like I have select say this one houses. Okay, this is simple for sample file with txt, tab delimited one. So I open it. So when I click on open, then <clears throat> you can see uh, this import data set window is appearing. And the input file, uh, it is showing the dif uh, different values though that are there in this particular file, okay. Then heading, it's automatically taking yes, means the first uh, line of this data input data file is consisting of header file, okay. <clears throat> then this is a tab separated one, okay. Then default decimal, those different, different type of uh, thing. This, it takes care automatically, no need to worry about. So this is my data frame. 
okay it will be like this and then uh, there is one uh, import button okay when you, when i click on import so you can see here that another uh, in the just beside the code editor one more uh, window appears and it is containing the data that we have just imported and here you can also have certain options like filtering those kind of thing arrangement ordering okay so you go back into this so my data set has been imported into the present r environment so what is the what is my name of that uh, file uh, that is houses so name of my data frame is houses okay and you see when i run this particular uh, just means clicked okay at the background in the console the corresponding command has been executed the corresponding command has been executed so it is what like houses then read dot delim delim means delimiter then it takes the path of my uh, file where it is existing okay then uh, after that view houses so uh, as it uh, view it this command is executing so you are getting this uh, particular window so which is uh, through which you can view the uh, file okay so these things have been automatically done at the back end you don't have to uh, write comment for that okay so the my data frame name is what my data frame name is houses now <clears throat> this is through uh, menu driven okay so we can use any excel file for that also so you can see here uh, first you have to select the url for that you have to browse okay so i like uh, this is one called prac data or whatever it may be okay i just open it now th this data preview is uh, already there and you can see the import options name uh, that is the prac underscore data by default it is taking the name uh, whatever uh, the as a file name okay so my data frame name is this now you can change the name of your data frame okay like here uh, this is the code preview okay you can change the name of your data frame you can put it any name like xyz abcd but it is always advisable to give a proper uh, name of your data set so that uh, you can uh, ever that what is the data set that i want to import into the environment then first row as names obviously first row as a header then open data viewer uh, if I mean just unclick it, you can see the additional command that was coming in the code preview that is disappearing. There is the view. Since I don't want to view whatever what is what is uh, uploaded, okay, what is imported, so you can, there is a certain option. So I just import it. So my project data has been imported. Okay, now we, I want to see it. Okay, this project data. Okay, I just you can see this is my practical data. Okay, or if I want, this is the case, or if I want to see the houses data, so I get it. Now, the same thing if you want to do it uh, through command means you, you can ask that why why i will be using command that that is just for your information my understanding okay like here uh, the corresponding command name is read dot table okay for simple that uh, tab separated textual data dot uh, txt with the extension dot txt okay so here i have mentioned uh, the path okay not the uh, entire physical path but uh, just suppose uh, for example this particular file is existing in my d drive okay then uh, here you have to put the i mean full path of your uh, data set okay and you have to mention specifically whether your header is true or false that means the first row is containing the variables or not similarly for 
uh, comma delimited file, we have to use the function read.csv, comma separated value, then you have to put the file name likewise. Okay. Then there is one option that uh, you don't have to put the, uh, you don't want to put the path of your, the location of your file. So in that case, you can use this particular function, which is called file.choose. So file.choose, what will happen in case of file.choose, uh, you will be having uh, an extra window that will be appearing, the selection window, the uh, from where the, phys <laughs> the physical path that where your data is existing. So that window will be opened up. Like if I use this one, uh, this one house price read dot table then file dot choose and if I run it so what will happen you see that this particular window is appearing okay and from here you just locate the uh, your desired file and then you open and uh, that is done so if we want to check it my house prices house price same this is the what we have uh, imported through houses, the same file I have imported. If you run it, build it. Now one most uh, very important thing that uh, your data set have been imported. Now you want to access one particular variable. Like see, I uh, in this house price, I want to get say price. Okay, and I run it. So what it will show, it will throw some error that object price not found. Uh, okay, uh, why? Uh, because your data frame uh, is available, but the individual items in your data frame that is still not available into the, your present environment. Okay, so the way is either you have to access like this, means you write house price and then put a dollar symbol. So, uh, by using dollar symbol of a particular data frame, you can access one particular uh, variable name or column name. Okay. Then you just click here, run. Now you can access. Or the another option is like you attach the use, use attach function, attach your data set. Okay. So that you can directly read all the variable names uh, of the data that you have just imported. So you can use this attach one, okay. So you run this one, this attach. Now you, uh, you, you, you want to check like floor, I want to floor and you just run it. So you get the value for the floor. Otherwise you have to write, you, if you want to access, you have to write house price dollar floor. And uh, you can use, uh, as I shown you earlier, the, on the data frame, you can put uh, many, ma many mathematical as well as statistical functions. Like we want to get the summary statistics for this house price data and we use the function summary. And uh, then I run it and you see that for different, all the uh, variables, <coughs> you get the summary statistics like mean, first quartile value, median, mean third quartile value and maximum value, okay. this kind of thing. So up to this, it is clear, all of you. Because this is very important. Whenever you will be doing certain analysis, we have to have import your data set. Okay, fine. Then another important topic here <laughs> is that how to use the packages that doesn't come, don't come with the pre -ins basic installation of the R software. Okay. Now before that, <laughs> I, I have just mentioned here that here, in, if you go to this particular URL and you just 
go here they will see available CRN packages by name what is CRAN it is comprehensive or archive network okay these are the <clears throat> packages those are available now you see the list of packages those are available and you see you know, thousands of packages are there okay so this is why r is very popular as a open source software mm. we have also seen many uh, papers regarding the, that this r package has all been developed along with this okay mm. so you take anyone you uh, okay something is there i am taking uh, randomly this one like develop actuarial models i don't know what it is but just let's check means how to install the package okay if i copy the package name i go to r studio then here you see there is one tab called packages okay here packages so in the packages uh, you see lot of packages that are already uh, means i have installed it means these are some base packages as well as some additional packages now you have to click on install okay that's the first one i i just put the searching here over here no this package is not already installed okay so I want to install it. So you just uh, click install. Now it is showing whether you install from CRAN repository or package archive file. So what does it mean? So CRAN means comprehensive R archive network as I already mentioned you. So this <laughs> CRAN means this is now I am in the CRAN. Okay. Now if you click this particular package <clears throat> name, you will see that there is certain name downloads okay there are some package sources there like windows windows binaries okay or mac or for these world resources so you can also click this one like zip files and then you can uh, save it uh, in your local machine you can save this uh, file into your local machine okay so in that case this uh, installation it is asking whether uh, you are directly want to install it from the CRAN or uh, you just uh, having repository in your own machine and from there you want to install so it is better if you are having uh, internet connection then you uh, present internet connection then, then you uh, go from repository why because you see here that there is one checkbox that is install dependencies so what does it mean that a package might be having dependencies on some other packages okay like say this particular package okay i'm not sure whether and when you type this one the intelligence work like uh, this package name you have if, if, if you have typed it properly accurately then the name will come below okay so you select from there so it may happen or it may be required that for installing this particular package there are five dependent packages those are also required okay so if this is checked install dependencies those packages will automatically be installed just before installing this particular package okay so it is better you go for the directly installing from the CRAN and you check this install dependent by default it is checked now I click on install. Okay, so this was not basically any dependent packages were there. Otherwise, you would find that those packages were installed before you install this, uh, this, this one, this particular one. Now, you see here, it comes alphabetically in the user library this package is appearing now you have to check it before you use it the installation is one time like 
in your particular system, if you install one particular package, that is for lifetime, means you don't have to install again and again. But you see here that these packages all are unchecked. That means whenever you initiate the R uh, if, if each and every time into your system, if you want to use that particular package, you have to check that. We have to check that. So when I check it, you see here, like this particular uh, command that is executing, that is the library and that is in the package name. So it is called loading of the package in the present R environment. So one is installation of the package, <clears throat> another is loading of the package. So installation of package is a must. And when you want to use it, it will be as the, uh, when you want to use the functions that are there in that particular package, you need to add that uh, library function into uh, your present R environment. Like this one, this uh, agri college that uh, was installed sometime. So if I check it, now you can see that library is added. Unless this library added, we cannot use the functions those are available like I'm, so I am showing you that for each of these uh, packages you see here uh, one reference manual is there like uh, this actuarial models this this pdf is there now <clears throat> here uh, you see here that uh, different uh, r functions those are documented here okay and uh, like there is one function change period another is change type so if you want to use these functions whatever is there in the are uh, there in the packages package <coughs> you have to first <coughs> load that library load that package into your present r environment so that is why i have checked it okay So I think it's clear to you up to this. Clear? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, we can also do this package installation and loading uh, by using the code like for installing a package the corresponding function name is install dot packages not package install dot packages and <clears throat> within uh, this parenthesis within quote you have to mention the package name either it may be a single quote or it may be a double quote both are accepted you have to mention the package name then loading a package then you mention the library and then package name like here the same command okay then we discuss about uh, some uh, help uh, like uh, getting help so for that the home page of the help that we can initiate by uh, using command help dot start this is the for general help so i find this so you see here in this uh, particular window the help uh, manual is appearing starting from introduction to r and those kinds of things now, if you want to uh, specify the a particular function, you want to uh, get the help for a particular function, the documentation for a particular function, like say mean function. Okay, so how do you, you can write, you can write either question mark, then the function name, or you can write help, and then within parenthesis, you mention the name of the function on which you help, require the help. So I just run it. So you see here, here, what you get, you get help for arithmetic mean. So how the mean function and used, then what are the different arithmetics, uh, sorry, arguments, then what are the different values that we can use along with examples that will appear. And same thing will appear if we use the like question mark, then mean. the same thing will appear. Then there is one particular function like apropos. So what it will do, it will list all the functions which contain the string mean. Like if I run it, you can see like there are different, all 
functions which containing the string mean it uh, uh, like k means is there and this column means row means etc everything is there okay so it will list all the functions which contain the string mean then there is if we want to specifically just show the example uh, want to get the example how to use mean in your console uh, window then you just write example then within parentheses the function name and if you run it you see here that you will get how to use the main function okay i think it is clear yes sir. then okay thank you then uh, we will get uh, before going to graphics i want to uh, tell one thing to you <clears throat> like uh, maybe the other instructors can go on like this way uh, like uh, there is a concept like on which working directory you are presently working that means uh, if i write this particular thing here get working directory so my present working directory i have this is the thing this is i have set it okay this is not default default those are are uh, in you know some documents uh, in the documents you will find somewhere there is r okay in the documents folder uh, like r okay so this is uh, by default your library uh, will be this means your working directory will be this okay your present working directory uh, but you can change it mm -hmm. you can change your present working directory so why it is what it may be required like uh, suppose uh, just think about certain advanced thing like uh, you were having hundreds of input files and uh, your r program what it does it reads picks one by one file from that location and it uh, executes okay do some analysis so in that case you can send say to your working directory that you can put your all research work in a directory where those uh, r input files or r codes will be there and uh, then uh, it will be picked up from there itself okay like uh, i have shown you one uh, example like this this one where we have discussed about the importing data so uh, you see here uh, in this particular folder uh, there is one uh, file name that is houses so if we want to use the houses we don't have to put the uh, okay i'm just writing it once again you don't have to mention the physical path here you just simply uh, put the file name so it it means that you are in the your present working directory it means this particular house at those txt file that is residing in your present directory okay so you need to need not to put the entire physical path over there okay if my working directory is not that means suppose in this particular uh, location if houses.txt not exist so it will throw an error okay so if i run it yeah so it's taking from here okay and if i now uh, say i uh, change this working directory so how to do that <clears throat> it is done by uh, your set working directory now one more thing because there are many things <laughs> as and when we come across i am just telling you like when you see any function in the rn uh, uh, here you will see that this is called the intelligence I mean uh, it will sense that uh, what uh, you want to what the what is the function that you want to use so based on that it provides you suggestion okay like uh, when you type in the google it provides certain suggestion okay based on your previous search history okay 
or something like that. It will provide the uh, some suggestions. So here also this particular uh, intelligence will uh, ease your task by suggesting these the functions you may be interested in using. And along with that, it shows what are the different means structure of that particular function and when, on which fun, uh, package that particular function is existing. Okay. Sometimes what happened that uh, I couldn't remember what is the exact function name. So I just type one or two few letters of that function. Like here, uh, suppose I, I have not completed writing set working directory. But it is showing and just saying that I remember, oh, that is the that uh, particular method that I want to use. But this is the method name. Okay. So what you will do? Uh, I suppose I uh, change it something like this. Anything. So I just uh, make it in the invited lecture. Mm. So I have changed my present working directory. Okay. Uh, okay. Now I want to uh, get this uh, file houses.txt, which is not there in my present working directory. Okay. Now I run it. Uh, sorry. Mm. This one. So this going error. Cannot open the connection. This uh, cannot open file. No such file or directory exists. Okay, because I have changed my working directory and where this particular file is not there. Okay. Again, I change it. My present working directory. I set the working directory like this. I run it. And then I want to read that particular file. Yeah, this is successful. Okay. Mm -hmm. So is this clear? This concept present working directory and set your working directory. Because some instructor used to do in that way that you have to set one uh, present working directory and then you go ahead. Okay. Is this okay? Uh, please. Is this okay? Yes, sir. It is clear, sir. Okay, then we uh, explore certain graphs because this is one of the, uh, you can say, good features, okay, in R that we can generate uh, graphics and with uh, several level of customization that is possible. So, first of all, uh, to generate any uh, graph we need to have the data okay with us so recently we have uh, imported one data that is called data one so we check we run yeah uh, data is not data one is not there so let us just uh, import data set for that i have one data one this one okay mm -hmm. Now you see the data here, data one. So simple file means not specific to anything, just random values of X and Y. We have used one, two variables in this particular data set. Now, uh, if we use plot, so what it will, uh, and we are having more than one variable. So what it will plot, it will plot basically the scatter plot. Okay, means X and Y variables. So we just run it. So you can see here uh, in this uh, window, plot window, like you are using in uh, X in X axis and Y in the Y axis, okay, different values. And basically the scatter plot means X1, then Y11, X2, Y22. So that's why we have get almost a linear kind of relationship here. Then uh, 
instead of this uh, data one, that is the name of our data frame, if we used to put the name of our uh, variables, okay, uh, I think X and Y are already there. Yeah. So <clears throat> I run it. Uh, okay. Yeah. Just a moment. We have to clear objects from here because these are overlapped basically. We have to import the data set once again. Import and then this steel x exist, y exists. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then I uh, use this one plot. So it will give the and just a moment. I just okay. Now uh, you see in this particular uh, plot window. So we use uh, variables plot x y. So you get the same graph here. Okay. If you name the data frame as well as the different variable names, it will provide you the same result. Now uh, this plot particular plot function, this is having innumerable number of arguments. Okay, means the level of customization and different features basically that are provided along with this particular plot function. There are a number of uh, arguments that you can pass over here. Like this CUL, CUL depicts the color. Okay, then type. <clears throat> This type stands for type of the line, like whether it will be get or oh, I will get dot, it will get a line, or you will get O oh, oh, means overlaid, that is point connected by lines. So if we see uh, basically before using this plot function, this plot, uh, so you will get. So um, what are the different uh, parameters that we can pass in this plot function? Okay, there's a huge number of parameters, those are possible. So again, how to save graph? Now there is one option that is export. So you can uh, save it as image, you can save as PDF or simply copy to clipboard. You know copy to clipboard means you just copy it and you put it into the say the word file you are working or you just save it as an image or save as a PDF. These options are there. Okay. Then uh, uh, like we ha I have used like plot uh, with data one color is red and type is overlaid. If I run it, you can see the color red we get and the type of uh, plotting that we get as overlaid. So I have uh, mentioned few uh, parameters explanation here, like X lab means what you are getting in your X axis. Okay, you can define it what will be there in your x-axis. You can define what is what will be the level of your y-axis. This is LAB stands for level in short. These are the axis levels for two axes. Then uh, main, main is what? Like you want to put uh, one figure title, okay, which, which is placed at the top of a plot in a large font. So for that, you can use main equal to string. But means string means you have to provide like uh, my chart, my graph like this. Then you can also put substring, uh, what is called subtitle, okay, which is placed just below the uh, x-axis in a smaller font, comparatively smaller font than the main one. So this is a, one example for you, like here plot, main, uh, I can write anything like my chart, for subplot, sub, subtitle, this is my data, data one, uh, color is, this we have already used. And uh, for uh, 
level of x, we can use number. And for level of y, we can use say length. Suppose anything, it may be anything. So I run it. So you see here, here you get the title as my chart. You get the subtitle here. And uh, as the x-axis level, you get number. And a y-axis level, you get the length. Okay. So this is um, your plot. Okay. Similarly, you can use bar diagram. You can use histogram, you can use box plot, you can use uh, scatter plot we have already seen. Okay, so different kind of charts and graphs are possible. You can uh, generate pie chart, right? You can uh, generate scatter plot matrix. Okay, we just quickly see a uh, few of them. Okay. Uh, so this is uh, like histogram. So here also uh, I just provided sample data like Y. I mentioned color is blue. I just run it. So you get the histogram. So whatever data you have imported your own data set, you can run these uh, methods on your own data set based on your uh, need. Okay. You can just use these functions. Then bar plot. Again, as a bar plot, I use Y again, some main level of X, level of Y, color say green. So I get like this for Y variable. Then uh, this is the pi one. So uh, suppose I just create one vector like X is equal to this. Okay. And uh, then I define certain labels like London, New York, I have taken this example from net. Then we can plot the chart like this. So here you have to put the uh, your data uh, within pi. Uh, the corresponding function name is pi. You provide the data set and the different labels for that. So if I run it, so you see here these are my different labels. These are the uh, means uh, values in terms of their uh, relative weight or percentage this pie chart is generated. Similarly, we go for bar charts. Okay, the corresponding function name is bar plot. Like if I create certain data say like this simple vector and I use function bar plot and use h as a parenthesis or argument in this particular function. So we get like this. Now we can increase the level of complexity in any of these plots that we have discussed. Suppose uh, we want to uh, put the names of my different of the bar charts inside the bar charts for different bar, but basically the bar chart labels. Okay, so we can also customize these labels, title, and colors like similar age. Then I put the names as this one. Then in the bar plot, uh, we use data set as age. Then what are the different names that uh, we'll be using uh, for bar chart labels? The corresponding uh, argument name is names.arg. ARG stands for argument, short form. That is M that we have already used. This is a vector like March, April, May, June, July. Okay, so we use X lab, Y lab, color, main, border. Means you can have the bar uh, chart with certain uh, border with each of this uh, bar. Okay. If you run this, so you will get like this. Uh, then you can also uh, use uh, stacked bar chart, like we have used uh, different colors to uh, break the one particular bar into different regions, uh, like this one east, west, and north. Okay. And then uh, we create certain values in the form of the matrix. And uh, then we create the bar chart. And you can see that, uh, suppose these are the different uh, regional, uh, we can say revenue, suppose, okay, from different regions of different months of a company. Okay. Uh, so in that way, you can uh, show your plot like this. And uh, you can also put the legends over any graph, uh, like uh, the corresponding function name is legend. 
and after legend you will be uh, first of all you will set the position where it will appear where the legend will appear either in the top left or top right or uh, there are four different options okay and uh, it can be left at the bottom or right side bottom okay so those four positions are uh, you can put the legends over there and uh, then if i run this so you can see this so but now for legend what will be the different uh this text east west and north from where this will come this will come from the regions okay so that why that's why i have mentioned here the regions then uh, we fill uh, with white uh, with the colors that we have used here so these are the same colors that we used to denote here okay and this is the uh, character uh, uh means the size of the characters that we will be using in our uh, legends and uh, by default it is one means uh, the default one okay and if you just increase or decrease this uh, this uh, relative size of the character then it will be uh, accordingly it will change like if i uh, make it bigger like say 1.2 so you can see the change over here like this and if you make it uh, say 0 0.8 or 0 0.5 so you will see the changes accordingly okay uh, like it is appearing twice because uh, i have generated the bar plot twice so that is why uh, just a moment uh, and this legend okay now you can see the relative size of these labels will change okay so there are so many things basically mm -hmm. uh, that you have to learn yourself based on your need uh, and then you, you just uh, basically you have to search <laughs> i can say google is the best option from where you will get these codes okay you have to understand those codes and you have to uh, use those codes in your own program okay like uh, if i uh, talk about the scatter plot matrices okay uh, in the scatter plot matrices, uh, we use we can use one particular data set that is already available in the R base package that is the empty curves. Uh, so if I use this one, so you will get scatter plot matrix like this, where more than one variables are there here, four variables are there, and you get the uh, scatter plot for a combination of each and every variables. Means this is first one is the weight versus weight. This one is the weight versus MPG. This one is uh, weight versus uh, uh, displacement or disposition. This is weight versus cylinder. Okay. This next row is uh, this is uh, weight versus MPG, uh, and this this is again MPG versus MPG. So that is why these diagonal are uh, not shown because these are on the two same variables, and then again it is on uh, mileage per gallon like that versus disposition so in this way you can also get a scatter plot matrix for your data and uh, one more you can use that is the box plot okay you can take any variable and you just try to use box plot okay mm -hmm. by so if you run this, so you will get. So in the box plot, we know that the five, five values we get. We get the uh, first quartile. We get the um, uh, third quartile. Any question? Is it possible to take matrix inverse? Yeah, matrix inverse. Uh, you just check now whether uh, twelve by twelve matrix. I have never used. Means matrix inverse is always possible. Uh, but uh, just check for 12 by 12 matrix through our studio. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have used for example like maximum 3 by 3 or 4 by 4. So you just check whether 12 by 12 matrix is possible or not. It must be possible. Okay. <laughs> Yes, 
please please mute yourself so this is a, a box plot okay so likewise different graphics are possible okay so i have already provided you the uh, this one uh, code okay code file so you can just uh, and comments are also given in the corresponding co uh, code file so you can uh, understand that for what this particular code is written for and from there you can just simply run and can check okay so any any query i think i have covered the basics means uh, what uh, it will be requiring in your subsequent classes is i am not sure how many lectures uh, are there means practicals are there based on uh, our software but uh, i think there must be some that is why uh, i was asked to deliver this particular lecture uh, so i think uh, it will be able uh, to use r for the subsequent classes those will be very specific means the code packages functions name those will be very much specific uh, but the processor will be same means uh, you have to import your file like this you have to install the package like this and you have to run the uh, your code like this and you have to generate graphics like this okay i think those things will be common uh so uh i think uh it's done from my side so please let me know any question any query I'm just I'm sharing it. Yeah, please. Uh, if any query is there, uh, please ask. So it was a very uh, nice lecture. Uh, sir has explained uh, everything uh, stepwise with examples. I think uh, because of that, uh, and continuously uh, participants have written in the chat that it was a very nice informative lecture and uh, for that uh, we are very thankful for sir uh, for coming and uh, giving so nice uh, lecture to our participants and that will certainly give them benefit thank you sir thank you so much sir uh, thank you sir and uh, thanks all the participants for uh, listening and patiently and just uh, going through all this things that i have covered thank you very much thank you sir sir yes sir yes uh this is dr swastan uh actually uh if something uh, because it is uh, most of uh, many participants may be uh, new thing uh if something is uh, required i will request you again yeah sure 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 yeah sometimes will, uh, suppose there some question they ask some uh, queries are there Still, they are not follow. We can have um, uh, one more round. Sure, sure, sure. Not Thank a you, problem. Sir. Thank you, Doctor. I, I I will be happy in yeah, doing that. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So tomorrow, participants, uh, please. Uh, that is eleven thirty tomorrow class. We have already given you revised timetable and uh, rescheduling of uh, classes. So you please attend uh, at eleven thirty. I'll be taking the class. So thank you. Please, thank uh, you please also, thank you. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, please fill all the Google forms, whatever are sent to your group. It is a request because it's a necessary forms. Thank you for. Thank you. It's close for today. <laughs>